Hey everybody, it's Triple L, and now let's talk some My Hero Academia. I got the pronunciation, nailed it. Alright, cool. So this video we're going to be following up on the Izuku father theory. Uh, that video did really well and there were a lot of interesting comments coming out of that video. So this video is going to be pretty much showcasing some of the interesting comments and I'm going to be talking about them and kind of looking at any arguments that were presented within those comments and giving my personal thoughts on it. Sometimes they're very interesting to read and they do give a lot of interesting perspectives. Like, man, there was one comment in the last video that I just thought was absolutely interesting and opened up like the question of like, secondary quirk characteristics like could this kind of interference happen so uh let's get out into this video i already gave a shout out to one of the interesting theories from the last video um i think you guys can see it if you pause the video if you want to read it out but uh overall uh we're going to be talking what people were saying about izuku's father and just for the record i am a big supporter of izuku's father is just a normal guy with maybe the possibility of him being a scumbag and i'm not the only one that thought that uh, for instance Skip Arsenal said, I think that Izuku's father should be a normal guy. The whole point of Izuku's arc is that he's not born with power or with a legacy to protect and he has to earn it by himself through sheer determination and intellect. Having him be a product of a powerful bloodline cheapens his character arc and removes what's unique to him from other typical protagonists. And I pretty much agree. Like I think what makes Izuku valuable as a character is that he is an ordinary boy. He doesn't even have the shonen characteristic of being someone that was always trying hard before he got his power. What's more, this would reaffirm again that Hero Academia takes place in a modern world. And in that modern world, the vast majority of people are just ordinary people that don't even use their quirks for anything. They are just people living their lives. I think it's fine to firmly cement that aspect of My Hero Academia's world with Izuku's father just being a normal guy. The only thing that's saying that Izuku's father should be something more than he is, is just the convention of the shonen genre and we don't necessarily need that good stuff so before we start talking theories let's cover rationales people brought up that either support some theories or open new possibilities and the first rationale we got is the star wars rationale so the my hero academia author he is a fan of star wars it's popped up in interviews because of this we could have a darth vader type situation happening with all for one this rationale supports the all for one father theory, but we should be careful applying such meta evidence because it's equally as likely that the author could pay homage to this by having all for one's kid being someone else in the first year of UA, such as Monoma. There were a lot of people who pointed out that possibility, and it's a pretty attractive idea. But this video isn't about that. The second rationale that was thrown around was the lying rationale, which was saying that at the most important moment, Inko Izuku's mother was lying to the doctor. Now this line of thought opens new doors to who Izuku's father could be and it also adds suspicion onto Izuku's mother since the question now becomes why was she lying? Like what compelled her to do so? And so when you come into this rationale, a lot of the reasoning is also based around what would push Inko to have to lie to this degree. Now whether this is true or not relies on how much you want to analyze the situation in the one panel that was presented. However, because those conclusions are going to be created from people's own understanding of body language and reasoning, they're not something I would personally say is conclusive enough to jump on. That said, this is still within the realm of possibility because all that's required for this to happen is really the author saying it happened. And it wouldn't be that hard to justify it at that point. Now moving into the theories, Izuku's father has a different quirk or no quirk. So this jumps on the lying rationale, pretty much states that there's more to this father's identity than was initially stated. The no quirk variation is something that came up to justify Izuku's lack of a quirk and it paints it as a, a slightly bigger conspiracy than we initially thought. One interesting variation was this explanation that we got. So Nix's general comment was, his real father's quirk is to bend the future. Think about it. What are the odds of millions of people in Japan for Izuku Midoriya to meet All Might? What are the odds of him getting one for all and not anyone else? All right. So I like what, where that's going. The problem is you can apply that to a lot of other characters. So the problem here is that because we have a story, we know that causality has to happen in a certain way for the story to exist. We know that the character has to get a lucky break for the story to exist. Um, the question is, it's whether or not the nature of the story requiring the character to be special. Is that going to be interwoven into the story or is it a consequence of the story? So 
when you have that kind of rhetoric, the thing is, this rhetoric can very easily apply to All Might. I mean, what were the odds that All Might was going to get one for all? What were the odds that All Might would meet the previous holder of one for all? What were the odds that All Might would be chosen to get one for all? What were the odds that All Might had a rhetoric that enabled the idea of the symbol of peace? When you start playing the odds game, it will fall apart if you point out another character who had extreme circumstances. And in this case, the extreme circumstance is All Might. And then if you wanted to take it another level, what were the odds that All For One's little brother would have a quirk that could be passed on? What were the odds that All For One's little brother, when he had a quirk shoved into him, was going to have it mutate? What were the odds of that? And it becomes, well, the odds were, were like extremely unlikely, but it happened. So it doesn't work in the context of a story. I, that's what I think when it comes to that particular one. Still, it is very interesting and... Like all other theories, this one doesn't really get disproven because all the author has to do to make this happen is just add that extra little bit of dialogue that says this is what actually happened. Um, it's just a case of whether or not this is likely. I think the rhetoric doesn't help in this particular case. Like This cannot be the main reason that you would argue for that. Pretty cool stuff overall. And next up, Izuku's father is a hero or vigilante or other combat based profession. So this is just the reverse of the Izuku's father is a villain idea, except it's less edgy. Uh, the interesting angles here though are that Izuku's father is a ranked hero in another country, and that would be pretty cool. The vigilante angle is one that also continues along that line and adds just that extra edginess of not being under the law. Now both of these work to be an explanation for how Izuku's family is financially supported and why the father just isn't around. Of course, this could also be answered by the father just having a regular job. Next is the big one. Izuku's father is Endeavor. Now guys, this is more unlikely than All For One is the father. Let's understand though why this one is popping up. It's because a good chunk of it is because Endeavor is the only person with a fire quirk that also fits the age range. People are likely to want to use characters that have already appeared over using new characters when they're making theories. This type of thinking is especially rampant in the One Piece theory community. This theory also takes into account Endeavor's shitty personality and uses it to justify how Izuku would be abandoned, thus accounting for no dad being around. But here's the assumptions that have to be made in order to make this one work. Endeavor needs to have an affair, Izuku's mother needs to be lying, and you need to cast doubt on Inko's nature because it now needs to be called into question. And then here's what we know that also makes this a bit more complicated. Endeavor has multiple kids, the youngest being Shoto Todoroki. One of his other kids that we have seen is old enough to be a working adult. For this to work, it requires Inko getting into a position where she would want to get involved with Endeavor, fully knowing that he was a married man because of how would you not know the married status of a celebrity? pretty much and then also both adults being compromised enough to make a mistake such as pregnancy people could argue for a love affair but to try to prescribe passionate emotion to endeavor in this scenario i don't think it works since the lack of passion and emotion is what gets izuku's mom and izuku living alone in this scenario like this theory just requires too many assumptions and like i said before i believe a good chunk of it is coming out just because he's the only other character that has a quirk that fits and the things against this is that logistics implicate an affair and it implicates that Inko was being more irresponsible than what her current character portrays her as. Of course, it was 15 years ago, who knows, Inko might have been a totally different girl. And the next one is kind of a spin-off of the Endeavor theory, is Izuku's father is a relative of Endeavor, and this is totally possible. I mean, at this point, we just don't know how quirk genetics work. Mind you, 80% of Japan has quirks and 80% of Japan's current population, I think that puts it around 122 million people. The probability that someone in that crowd has another fire quirk, it's high. But we know that quirks for sure have been around for about nine generations. So if we take that into account, we could say that maybe even someone split off from Endeavor's family like all the way back into eighth generation. Again, it's super possible. There's nothing stopping that possibility. That theory, however, just adds a little bit of extra subtext to the Izuku and Endeavor relationship. It's just a, a neat little thing. Um, this one is totally possible, like I said. Anyways, those are the theories that popped up for the previous Izuku's father video and whatnot. I hope you guys enjoy them. I really enjoyed reading a lot of them, and I enjoyed looking at the various rationales that you guys were coming up with. Um, if you still feel strongly about the Endeavor theory, let me know down below. Argue it. 
let me see what you got. And then if I have time and I see the comment, I will go and I will try to poke holes in it. Uh, but yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Some cool little ones here and there. But uh, till next time, I hope you have a great day. And yeah, keep on making theories. Now that would be the end of the video, but I got to pimp out the Discord server. So the channel now has a Discord server. Link will be in the description and in a comment down below. It's just a nice place to chat about things that we like, which is really what it should be. But if you have any interest in joining up on the discussions, feel free to pop into the Discord server. And yeah, I think that's this. Yeah, that's my shameless plug for the day. Okay, great. Excellent. Done. Let's get out of here.